I like to talk about the future, uh, but I also like to understand history to understand the future. In the mid-80s, 1985 or so, AT&T, then the largest technology company in the world, hired McKinsey, uh, one of the most prestigious management consulting firms, and they asked them one question, just one little question that cost them millions of dollars to answer. The question was, how many cell phones will there be in the United States market by the year 2000? So that was a 14, 15 year forecast. The answer to life, the universe, and everything was 900,000. The actual number was 109 million. They weren't just off by 10% or 20% or 2x. They were off by a factor of 120x. <coughs> okay? They were off by a factor of 120x. They missed out. So here's the forecast, and here is the actual number. Worldwide, it grew to basically 6 billion phones out of 7 billion people. How can a bunch of very smart people get it so wrong so often? Now, this is not you know, about McKinsey. This is about companies still missing out on these types of exponential uh, technology growth and market growth today, okay? Um, so basically, the answer to that is what this course is about. The answer to that is that companies uh, consistently, to this day, miss out on disruptive innovations and disruptive uh, technologies for three reasons. One is exponential technologies. They fail to think exponentially. We usually think linearly. Look at almost any projection, right? Um, I've basically worked in energy over the last few years. And if you look at any energy projection from here to 2050, you know, the growth of solar or wind or whatever is all linear, okay? People fail to think exponentially. And that is gonna be one of the themes of this course. The other thing is business model innovation. So it's usually the case that it's not the disruptive innovations that are disruptive. Disruptive innovations enable new types of business models. And it's the business models that are disruptive because the incumbents cannot compete with a totally new business model, okay? And you know we're gonna go over, I, I know you have a lot of questions. Uh, it's gonna be eight weeks of these things, okay? The other thing is disruption models, okay? Uh, we've all basically known about the innovator's dilemma, the classic, I'm calling it classic, disruption model. But it turns out that there's more, okay? More to disruption than the innovator's dilemma. Um, and so, again, we're gonna talk about disruption models. So these are gonna be the three main themes of this class. How do we think exponentially? Um, how do we innovate in terms of business models? And how do we think in terms of disruption? What are the frameworks for this class? This is it, right? This is the big 
overview that we're going to keep coming back to. Um, we're going to talk about exponential technologies, 10 or 11 exponential technologies in this class. Um, these exponential technologies are not mutually exclusive. It's usually the convergence of some of these technologies that enable the creation of new business models and new products that are disruptive. Um, we're going to talk about business model innovation, um, product and market fit, which has to be done, and then how we're going to disrupt, uh, create and disrupt markets. When we talk about product and market fit, um, I'll talk about a few of the key concepts, um, mainly the whole product, which I'm going to talk about today, and the marketing and segmentation, meaning the product market fit that I'm going to talk about next week. Kodak knew digital photography. You could argue that Kodak invented digital photography. How does it happen to a company that invents the technologies that disrupt a market, <coughs> but they could not actually lead this disruption. They thought that they could use the same <coughs> business model that they had before in digital imaging. Okay? So this is an example of, you may know the technology, you may know the market, but you have the wrong business model. And this is an example of why you need business model innovation. This is the business model innovation uh, framework. Back way back when, about seven, six years ago, I used to teach a whole class on business model innovation, right? Um, and this is more or less the framework that I use for business model innovation. So this is the strategic choices, which means what product, what market, um, you know, what's my value proposition, what kind of markets do I want to get into. Um, we need to look at the value network or the value chain uh, to basically uh, make sure that we're getting into the right, the right um, uh, markets in terms of disruption. Uh, we need to know about value creation and value capture because the business model, we need to know what the profit engine is going to be. Okay? So I'm going to give you a couple of classes on this business model innovation. How to create, how to think about the finance, um, the romance, uh, all those aspects of, of the business model. This is the model of disruption that we've been using since about 1997 or 8, when Clayton Christensen published his Innovator's Dilemma. Once companies figured out how to do internet advertising right, which basically started around 99 or 2000, that's when the disruption came. And it came very quickly. The semiconductors improve at a rate of 41% per year. Okay, and that what, that's what has brought Cell phones, tablets, PCs, the internet, the web, routers, all of the above, okay? That's why you guys make the big bucks, because of this rate, 41%. So we have many technologies that are improving at exponential <coughs> rates, and I'll show you a few of them. Um, examples, network capacity, Cisco people, the cost of transmitting a bit is decreasing by 50% every nine months. 
amazing. 50% every nine months. Okay, this is the log scale. Oh no, this is, this is storage, sorry. Bandwidth, 50% every year. Storage, 50% every 18 months. Pixels, I'll come back to pixels, okay? All of these technologies are still improving exponentially, okay? And it's the convergence of these technologies that have produced this, and the tablets, and you know, all the other things, the Google Plus. Now, the fact that a technology is improving ex exponentially does not mean that the market is improving exponentially. I was at Cisco in 93, and I'll show you what I was looking at. So, 1977, there were 111 hosts, internet hosts. By 84, seven years later, it grew by 10x. That's exponential. Then it grew by another 10x in three years. So it's actually accelerating the growth rate, right? By 89, two years later, it grew another 10x. By 92, it grew another 10x. Right? I was let's go about here. Now, what would you say about the internet if you were looking at this? <coughs> now, most people would say, yeah, it's been growing like that, but you know, it grew from a small number. It grew from 100, so, you know, to a million. That's a lot. It's not going to grow beyond that. Not at this rate. Guess what? By 2012, we had a billion nodes, hosts, okay? Another one of those exponentially growing markets. Does this make sense? The number of internet hosts. And it's still growing. How far will it grow? Stay tuned, because we're going to talk about sensors in this class. There are 10 or 11 technologies that we're going to talk about in this course. Um, solar PV, 3D printing, machine learning, slash artificial intelligence, uh, sensors and the Internet of Things, uh, electricity storage, el electric vehicles, autonomous cars, self-driving, mobile Internet is still growing at exponential rates, E-money. E-money is huge. Drones. Sensors are getting cheaper, faster, smarter. Look at how fast some of these sensors are growing. 59%, 700%, 700% compass. 347%, uh, that's microphones, that's a sensor. Gyroscopes, 189%. So all of these uh, sensors are improving exponentially. Their markets are growing exponentially, both. They're both improving exponentially in terms of technology, and the markets are growing exponentially. How big is this going to be? Well. There are folks, so now we're in the billions of sensors shipped every year. Now we're shipping about five to 10 billion sensors per year. There are folks who are already calling for a trillion or 10 trillion sensors. A world of a trillion sensors or 10 trillion sensors means that there's going to be a thousand sensors per person. All of these are going to be disrupted over the, the next um, 10 to 15 years. They said that there's going to be up to $33 trillion of disruption, yearly disruption, by the year 2025. So again, we're talking just around the corner. $33 trillion of disruption. I think 
they're conservative. Okay? I think, I mean, energy is an $8 trillion um, uh, industry that's going to be disrupted, period, by 2025. Uh, manufacturing, look at Baxter. And you know, you're going to look at a lot of technologies that, that we're going to see in this class. Construction is a $7 trillion. Think about 3D printing. Finance is interesting also. Um, does anyone know a company called M-Pesa? Just to give you an example. In Kenya, uh, a company called M-Pesa went from basically zero to processing the equivalent of 40% of the country's GDP within four years. 40% of the country's GDP, people, right? The equivalent in the US would be, what, $6 trillion? <laughs> four years. 